Olympic bronze medal. Then, as a professional, he became the undisputed cruiserweight world champion. He then moved to the heavyweight division, winning that title two times. His professional record now stands at 31 victories, 22 by knockout, with only two defeats. Tonight, he again displays his courage by facing for the third time the toughest opponent of his career. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, introducing the warrior, the three-time world champion and former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Real Deal. across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white, trimmed in red, and weighing 240 pounds. In 1988, he came home to the streets of Brooklyn with an Olympic silver medal. After turning professional, he fought his way to the World Heavyweight Championship in 1992. And in his third title defense, he suffered the first and only loss of his career. Tonight, he plans on reversing that single blemish on his record. A record which now stands at 37 victories, 31 by knockout, with that one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, a two-time world champion, former undisputed, and current WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick Big Daddy. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in our dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my command at all times. Give me good sportsmanlike conduct. Understood? All right, shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Where's Lauren, Joe? Right here. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. In the control. first two matchups, Riddick Bowe was the busier man. Ringside estimates say that he threw. 500 more punches combined than Holyfield and landed 200 more. Do you expect that to be the case again tonight, Joe? I do, Joe. I think that Bo will be busier. However, it's exactly what Evander needs to do. He needs to be busier. He needs to be first. He needs to get his punches off and show Bo, even though he's a smaller man, he can be more effective and can be busier. Lander Holyfield, Riddick Bo. Bo, a three to one favorite here in the Vegas sports books to win this third fight. Huh? You can't afford to sit back at a guy like Riddick Bo. He's just too big, too strong. You've got to be first. You can see a slight delay here. There was a delay in having this main event to begin with, as Riddick Bo was claiming that he couldn't get his gloves on properly and now you can see Joe Cortez the referee bringing up a ringside commission official to deal with the ring ropes. But wait no longer. Bo Holyfield three the final chapter is underway from Caesars Palace. And Holyfield even looks even better condition more cut than he has in the past and he's always looking good. He is a tremendous looking supreme athlete a chisel 213 pounds spread across that six foot two frame. Remember he was the cruiserweight the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the year. That was nine years ago. He's opened up with a nice effective jab Holyfield. Jab into the body jab into the head. He's got to stay busy. Not about out there too, to stay out there at range behind that jab doubles it up there good movement from Holyfield and then he places a right hand after that jab. I like the way he's moving I like the way he's moving his feet and utilizing the ring. I think it's a good smart strategy for Holyfield triples up that jab now circling on the outside trying to win over those judges fight a smart fight early on here.
to confuse a fighter like Riddick Bowe. Evander Holyfield brings more experience, brings more knowledge to the ring. And although Riddick Bowe is bigger and stronger, the foot movement is what will confuse him. Keep him thinking. Give him a boxing lesson. Exactly right. Comes to the inside that time, gets two punches off before they tie up. Cortez separates him. That Riddick Bowe does have a nice effective jab. Bo has a very good jab. It's what comes after it that should concern Holyfield. Let him out, let him out, let him out. Especially if Bo can utilize that jab as a way to get through that front door and get into that danger zone where he can let loose. Misses with a right hand as Holyfield ducked under. He looks very comfortable, Holyfield, right now. He really does. So many questions as to this addition of Evander Holyfield after all the controversy and the medical events after the Moore fight. Oh, get those get him so far there. off to get a good start. Go, we'll there. see Come how on. he holds up as the night goes onward. There's a nice jab from Riddick Bow. Come on, break out, come on, break out, break out. Come on, let's go. Let's go. And if you can prevent tying up Holyfield, you should try and stay away as much as possible. Don't let that big man lean on you. That'll take Get its your toll heavy. as the night goes oh, on. Oh, oh. Oh, what the heck? Come on, what the heck? What the heck? Warning from Joe Cortez. Bo just misses with a right hand, and Holyfield fires back one of his own, coming to the end of round number one of this final chapter. Oh, see how beautiful that double left is working? Keep working, keep working. Breathe deep, breathe deep, breathe deep, breathe deep, breathe deep. Just getting used to that cool air. That's all it is. You're doing great. It's a great first round. Don't wait on him. Mm -hmm. But, but you can't throw one punch because he's going to counter two. Why? Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Okay. All right. Well, they fought 24 rounds combined against each other already. So you think that Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield would have such a great sense on, of each other but yet needing to be reminded of the basics after round one of this, their third fight. Good words of advice from Don Turner and Tommy Brooks in the corner of Holyfield and from the legendary and venerable Eddie Futch with Big Daddy Bo, basically Joe Macy. Hey, they love the work of the double jab and the consistency from Holyfield. And meanwhile, on the other side with Riddick Bo, his people saying, don't wait, go out there and make the fight, be first. Well, Riddick Bo threw more punches in the first two fights, and that's just what they're hoping for out of his corner from these next upcoming rounds. He's got to be busier to be more effective. That first round, he let Holyfield have the upper edge. This is the 26th round these guys are fighting with each other. Yeah, you look at it that I way, mean, it's they, 26 uh, round. They know each other pretty well. Do they ever? And has it ever created tremendous results? Such electrifying action between these two. Bo now with the jab. Good range finder for him. Such an effective tool and weapon. Holyfield going to the body with it. Oh, showing a little more confidence this round, this early in the second round. This guy's feet a little more planted and uh, a little more effective with the jab. Come on, Ronnie, let him go, Ronnie. All right, break out to lead, break out to lead. Come on, let's go. Misses with the right hand. Holyfield came under it. Try to right of his own. Back to the jab at range for both men. There's a right oh, nice hand right from Bo. So far the best right hand that he scored with tonight. Now on the inside. Now this is not where Holyfield wants to be strategically, but in his mind, in that warrior mindset, it may be where he wants to be in terms of his emotion and his personality. He was so successful in the first round, he should go back to what he was doing, moving, being light in his feet, thinking light. 
just caught an uppercut from Riddick Bowe as he was covering up and leaning forward shoulder to shoulder head to head. Well the first instance Joe Macy where we saw the change in real estate and it was Bo who got the better of it. Came over the right hand. Bo has that height advantage that just seems very perfect very comfortable to come over a jab to land the right hand on top. Short just right again. hand. Just off to the side. Now on the inside. Holyfield willing. Nice body shot by Riddick Bo. They're still oh. going after the bell. Look at this. Look at this. Ain't no need for that. You hear that? He can't bounce and move like he was before. Uh -huh. yeah. So we so keep using that jab. And if you get on the inside, hold his hand. Hold his hand. He was cool on it. When he tries to come to you, step back and throw that little uppercut. Okay? the second round it was a little something extra Joe Macy now, this is a great exchange by both fighters but this is not where Holyfield wants to be on the inside tying up everyone talks about Riddick Bowe's jab and how great it is and it is but he's a great inside fighter and you can see these ripping uppercuts ripping great body shots and that's not where Holyfield wants to be and what about the fact that the last two punches in that sequence took place after the bell well some things never change it's not the first time that's happened with these two guys Possible sign of things to come with that emotion letting loose and overflowing there as to where this fight could be headed. Uppercut on the inside. He's a great inside fighter. I'm liking these uppercuts. I'm liking the body shots here by Riddick Bowe. You got to wonder why Vander Holyfield wants to stay inside there. Good uppercuts by Bo. Holyfield tries to come back with a left hook. You know, for a six foot five guy, boy, Bo can really be a good infighter. He really is a good inside fighter. I don't think he's accredited yeah, enough for his inside, inside fighting. Give me clear he's, oh, look at the right uppercut. He's really getting the upper hand here on the inside. You can see Holyfield smothering on the inside, that turtle shell defense, but he ate an uppercut moments ago, leaning forward. Clear on, guys. Holyfield, too, is a good inside fighter. He just doesn't have the size against a guy like this. He's just too small. The right hands are ripping up top from uh, give me give me Riddick Bow. Take a nice little body shots there. There's that uppercut again. But of course, if Holyfield's getting to come and back one of his, his own, own uppercut. One of his own, a right uppercut by Holyfield, and then they trade. And Bo digs in. Get him out, come on, get him out of there, come on. Get those eyes out. Come on, get ever think there, Holyfield's man. getting beat, because it's just at that time that he's going to come back and answer with a combination of his own. Left hand on the inside, right hand uppercut fires off, tries to dig underneath again. Up, oh, that was low. That looked hey, like it was oh, south oh, of the border. Oh, oh. And Joe right. Cortez is going to hand out the warning. It's amazing the geography of this fight has changed so drastically from where Evander Holyfield was in the first round when we were praising him for the work with the jab and the circling and the movement on the outside. That's right, Joe. You, you know he's tough, Holyfield. He knows he's tough. You got to think that's why he's inside here. But he's got to be a smarter fighter. He is a smart fighter. He's got to move, get back on his toes. It'll be much more effective as he was in the first round. It seems this entire round has been fought with these two men just a couple of inches away from each other. They each have had their moments. For Bo, it has been the uppercuts on the inside. For Holyfield, just releasing a little bit, backing off, and trying the hooks or the short rights. Now there's separation. Who will get the best of it? Holyfield misses with a lunging left hook. Starting to get interesting here at Caesars Palace. Bo Holyfield. To the left, a little bit to the right. You keep throwing those uppercuts with the right hand and the, and the left hand. Oh, and watch for him. Look, look, look for that one big shot. But right. one big shot come, get under the knee. Bang. Uh, 
that we're crediting Bo for his uppercuts, but here we see Vander Holyfield sneak a right uppercut of his own just because of it. Riddick just got lazy for one second. The uppercut is the most difficult punch in boxing to see, to, to defend, to protect yourself. And then Bo answers back with some nice body shots of his own. Great inside fighting on both their parts, just that Evander should be on his toes moving as we saw in the first round. I think it's so interesting, Joe, to talk about Evander Holyfield as a good infighter. 6'2", 213 pound heavyweight in this new era of the super heavyweights. Here he is for the third time sitting in there matching punch for punch with a 240 pound prime Riddick Bow, but that's the mentality of a Vander Holyfield. He and believes he, in himself that he can fight on the he inside. He is a good infighter. We know he's a good infighter, but it's a lot of it is just ego. He's going to show everyone that he can stand there with his 240 pound guy as he's doing right now. Look at that. Very, very nice left hand from Holyfield. And because he was successful there, he's going to continue to go out of his game plan where he should be boxing. Like he opened up this round with a couple of great jabs. Bo scores with a right hand of his own. We are two years removed from their second fight when we had the fan man episode and it was a very different Riddick Bo that we saw in that fight. Holyfield went on to win a majority decision. That fight was also here at Caesars Palace. It's a beautiful night here on the Vegas Strip. 62 degrees, over 12,000 fans for this much anticipated third fight in this heavyweight trilogy. The 28th round, they've spent in front of each other right now. They know each other well, they respect each other a lot. Actually, in recent years, developed a very nice relationship they outside have. the ring. Yes, they have. How can you not with one another? When you face each other like this, you've seen what each other's got. Combination from Bo. Fall back to the inside. Holyfield tying up that left hand for a moment of Riddick Bo. Trying to push him back. But now slowing his pace a bit is Holyfield. See if he can pick it back up here. Oh, very, on the inside. very effective. Those little body on, shots, they don't look hard. They add up towards the later in the rounds. Peppering the body, come ripping uppercuts. You see his head moving up. Gets off with a four punch combination. Okay, and a holding behind the head from Holyfield. And you see the brief warning from Joe Cortez. Now, if you're ready to you want to be fighting in the inside. You want to just be a little aggressive. Get grab Holyfield, wrestle with him, fight him on the inside, and don't let Holyfield move like the way he's doing there. This looks like Keep a him tail of two rounds compared to the Holyfield that opened up this fourth round on the attack. He needs to be busier, Holyfield. It doesn't seem like he's or maybe he's resting this round. Maybe he's slowing. Something we said we would look out for. Are we seeing it now? Here he comes again, picking just, his spots, and Bo answers back. Just when you think he's slowing, he comes back with a combination. Tommy, Tommy, chill out, chill out, chill out, man. It's okay. No, man. No, no, no. No, man. You got a little, little blood in your mouth, that's all. Stop the hands, Bob. Stop the hands right down the center. This is action from round four. This is the type of aggression we need to see from Holyfield more throughout the fight. Even though Bo misses a few shots here, Evander Holyfield throws more shots here. He misses, he lands a few, although there's a low blow coming up here. Lands a good left hook, and we need to see this type of aggression. More punches, more punch volume. Even though you're missing shots, you need to stay more active, more busy. And uh, this is what we're going to need to see out of Vander Holyfield for the remainder of the rounds. It's definitely what Don Turner and Tommy Brooks want to see. But what they saw from Evander Holyfield when he got back to the corner after the fourth round was a fighter who looked like he was labored breathing and he had a bloody mouth. And they seemed really concerned about his gas tank, about his energy level, Joe. Well, that's not something they're really familiar with uh, seeing out of Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield is a very well-conditioned athlete. You don't see much blood out of this guy and uh, they're concerned that it's this early in the fight and he's looking that way. Good exchange there. 
Of course, two questions to be asked there. You got a bloody mouth. Sometimes that can drip down and cut your wind. Or does it have something to do with what happened in spring of 94 when he was diagnosed with a heart defect only to be cleared later? We can only hope not, Joe. But he doesn't look like the Evander Holyfield that we know at this point. What I'd like to see is more punch volume, more aggression. All right, break out, break out, break out, break out. Come on, come on. Come on, hey, come on, let's go. I'll be holding. Back to the jab for Riddick Bow. Holyfield just falls right, break in. Up, break out, break out, break out, break out. Let's go. And you can see him right there almost taking a deep breath, Joe. And he's moving backwards. It's not something we're real familiar with seeing out of the Evander right, Holyfield. Out, he's out, taking out, steps back out. after the referee breaks him. Okay. He looks exhausted. Well, this would be a good time for him to take some time. He has up to five minutes with that low blow to rest up and let referee Joe Cortez know when he's able to continue. Has a full five minutes. You would or wouldn't, Joe? I would take the time. Absolutely. He looks like he needs the time. There ain't no need for no I told you. I told you already. One point already. If you remember correctly, after the fan man incident in fight number two, it seemed as if Holyfield right, came on stronger after that. Maybe it was the rest. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe he needs the rest right now. Now, are you surprised that he nodded to Joe Cortez? There was a point deduction into Riddick Bo, but he came back to fight right away. And look at this. Bo no. on the attack. No, I'm not surprised. He's Evander Holyfield's a warrior. That's right. He doesn't care. That's his mentality, but maybe it's a mentality that doesn't conform with the strategy at hand. He looks off balance here. He's answering right, back, but he's not effective. He looks off balance, looks like he's breathing heavy, and he's moving backwards. You gotta punch this up, keep him up. Ten of Vander Holyfield, up, Joe oh, Riddick, oh, anything oh, here in this fifth round. You can only hope that it has nothing to do with his health condition. No, because it's but not the Vander Holyfield we're used to seeing. I'll tell you, Joe Macy, how can that not be in the back of anybody's mind who's sitting here at Caesar's Palace? Oh, so on, much made on, of it, on, and now you see on, this right in front of your eyes. Oh, break up, break up, break up. Right. Joe Hands Cortez down. even turns to him and says, you are right. Come on, get him out of there. Come on, get him out of there. He looks worn. He looks tired. Can he find a little something? Coming to the end of this round. That's the time he's turned it on. Holyfield tries to go with the right hand. Joe Cortez motioning to Dr. Flip Pomansky. Look at me, Evander. Look at me. See Hamansky getting in there. Uh, you know, we, we, we're here to make sure you nobody know, takes unnecessary punishment. Hey, Joe, take control I of this thing. This guy's hitting behind me. I took a point over at your fan. Be quiet. Take control of yourself, all right? I got control okay. of myself. Okay. You take control okay. of the fight. All right, let the corner go. All right. You can hear him moaning, you can hear him breathing heavy. It looks like he's uncomfortable. The way they're talking in that corner between Dr. Flip Hamansky and referee Joe Cortez, it would not be a shocker if they were leaning towards potentially ending this fight if something goes south here for Holyfield. Well, as I said, opening That's how this desperate fight. the situation is. It sure, look, just landed a nice hook, Holyfield. Holyfield trying to come back. Holyfield, oh. good left hook. Holy cow, what a turnaround. Can you believe this? Now that's the Evander Holyfield Seven. that we know. Seven. Just hey. when you think he's getting beat. You all right? For the first time in the career of the job Bo is steadying himself it seems that Bo's got his feet under him right now he's just being tactical 
Still in the corner. Wow. What a sixth round. These two gave us one of the most dynamic moments in recent boxing history in their first fight. And now they're thrilling us here in their third fight. They may not want to let Bo out of the corner at that point. It seems that Vander just let him out like he has nothing left. May have punched himself out, Joe. And now Bo returns some fire. Now it looks like Bo's got his legs back, his strength back, and Evander may have punched himself out. What courage by Evander on, Holyfield on, on. just to put himself into that position on, of on, being on, on the on. precipice. A beautiful a left hand. Possible, possible on. stunner. Come on, get him out of there. Come on, get him out of there. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Final minute of this sixth round. A on, sixth hold, round that started with there, fireworks. It's looking as if Vander's just trying to hang on now. He's run out of gas, hasn't he? Shaking his head, taking steps backwards. But he gives you everything he has. Always does. Oh, it may up, not up, all up. be there tonight. He's clearly affected. But what is there is pure gold. Tries with the oh, short on, left hand up, again. Up, it caused the knockdown. The first time Bo has ever been down. He's reacted well. Nice, nice jab, jab from Holyfield. Very good work with the jab from Holyfield. Because he always finishes strong. Tries the right hand. Oh, oh what a six up, round. Bo Holyfield. be talking about for years. Now Evander comes out off of poorest round of his career in the fifth round. You got to think this is just an act of desperation. I'm going to come out and give it my all at the sixth round, especially at the top of the round. He lands that left hook so effectively. Riddick Bowe didn't even see it coming. Went right down for the first time in his career. Keep in mind at the end of the fifth round, both the ringside physician and the referee were in the corner of Evander Holyfield looking him over. This fight was headed to a place that Holyfield didn't want to see. It's just a short left hook. Riddick Bow didn't even see it coming. Landed right at the sweet spot, right in the chin. Joe Macy, I offer this question up to you. Will it now be a wake-up call for Riddick Bow? It's a great question, Joe. Riddick Bow seems to have the confidence that he's had most of the fight, even though he was knocked down in the sixth round. Vander Holyfield just doesn't seem to be where he wants to be right now. He seems worn, tired, leg weary. There you go, Holyfield. Round number seven of a scheduled 12 round heavyweight main event outdoors here at Caesars Palace. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Joe Macy. So far, Joe, it's been everything we've expected. We just see a little more strength out of Holyfield, a little more energy. Let's go. Holyfield, hold ahead. Keep him up. Keep him up, this guy. Right back to the inside. It just doesn't seem as if Holyfield has the energy, has the conditioning to be on his toes, boxing with that jab as he was affected early on in the fight. Well, he hasn't thrown a punch on the inside in quite some time right now, so that also speaks to that argument, Joe. Not much on that jab. You know, his arms are looking heavy. We're not used to seeing this out of Evander Holyfield. I almost think Riddick Bull would be taking more advantage, more punches, harder punches. Maybe he can't even believe what he's seeing out of Holyfield. That may be it. Maybe he thinks Holyfield's playing possum. The way he started that sixth round, obviously you still need to be careful. Always got to be right, careful of Evander Holyfield. Bring just up. when you think he's hurt, just when you think he's damaged, it's when he's the strongest. to the jab. Uppercut on the inside and then test him with the left. Short right uppercut, short left hook. Watch your hands inside, watch your hands. Get him out, let him out, let him out of there. Don't hold, don't be holding. Holding that left 
Left arm right, come above. On, get him out, get him out. Inside fighting like that, you got to wrestle with the arms. You got to create your own opening. So that's just what both of these guys are doing. Both very well accomplished at doing it. Bo creates a little bit of separation, nice but there's a left hand from Holyfield, and now Bo willing to trade a little more. Good exchange here. Great left exchange. hand from Holyfield again. All ahead, all ahead. Come on, get it. Let's go. He finds a way. Oh, break out, nice break out, break out, come on, nice back, round back. short back, punches. Back, come on, let's go. Just the same let's left go. hook that he knocked Riddick Bow down with. He's very effective with those punches. Oh, get the hands there. Get the hands. The whole leg. Get the hands up. Coming to the end of round number seven here at Caesar's let's Palace. Go, there, Give me a clean round. Give me a clean round here. You cannot you know? stand in front of this guy. Okay. You can't stand in front of All you got to do is step around. Him. Step around. Hey, look. When, when you do fire, fire in sets. Not one or two. Right. Three and four. Hey, you set, shorten that hook up, okay? Right. Don't aim for his head. Aim for his shoulder. You got me? All right. All right. Keep those punches in his body going. Punch a little uppercut. A little uppercut and hook. All right. Come on, okay. All right. You got to start again. Remember, remember. Right. 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 And you did it once. Scheduled for five more rounds here between Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield. And you heard the corner of Evander Holyfield as he was still breathing very, very deeply on the stool. Don't stand in front. Don't stand in front. It's exactly what he did in that seventh round. Great round number advice. eight. Great advice, Joe, but I just don't think he has what it takes to get around side, to step left, step right. He just doesn't seem like the fighter that we've seen from the past. Hey, he placed a pretty good right hand there. Remember how he started that sixth round? He scored a knockdown. He's coming forward. Here comes Holyfield, but he gets oh. caught by a short right hand from Riddick Bowe. Oh, He's hurt, Joe. He Seven, is hurt badly. Eight. He might. Nine. Just feel? beats the count. How do you feel? Take a step forward. Take a step forward. Take a step forward. Take a step forward. All right, let's go. Barely Jeez. listening to the commands of Joe Cortez. It's over. That's, That's over. it. That's it. That's it is it. over. That's it. Evander Holyfield has never been knocked out. All the battles, all the wars, and Riddick Bowe is the one to do it. That is not a good scene for Holyfield, Joe Not Macy. a good scene at all, Joe, but that's a good stoppage on Joe Cortez's part. He was out of it. He didn't even seem as if he wanted to step forward on Joe Cortez's demands. Rock Newman and Riddick Bowe celebrating. They were referring to this fight as the final chapter. What an exclamation mark Bo placed at the end of it. You've almost got to be concerned with Evander Holyfield right here in the corner on his stool with all the health problems and the heart conditions. He was tired in the third round, which you've never seen before, breathing heavy between every round, looking like he didn't have his legs under him, and you hope he's okay. And there will be those who say, yes, Riddick Bo is the first to ever knock out Evander Holyfield. But what version of an Evander Holyfield did he just knock out? Is it Evander Holyfield with a health condition, with a heart problem? Is it Evander Holyfield that just had too much taken out of him from the previous two wars that they had? Or is Evander Holyfield just completely done? We don't know. Good question, and a question that needs to be answered for those handling the career of Holyfield. You know Holyfield is such a warrior. You know what his thoughts will be. And you see Riddick Bowe and his corner and his entourage praying in the corner. Signature moment in the career of the 28-year-old. Former heavyweight champion trying to work his way back to the top. No belt on the line tonight, but it was bigger than that. This was about two men defining themselves through each other. Holyfield now up, being tended to. You see Dr. Flip Tomansky trying to get him some air. Boy, it was scary the way he looked those last three rounds. Let's take a look back at how Riddick Bow finished things off. Vander Holyfield's fighting very strong right there with a great combination, but he gets caught with a short right hand there. Bad timing, leaning forward, and Holyfield goes down. 
You know his corner said don't stand in front. Don't he, walk right in. He's exactly right what in he did. It's a short right hand. Very tough to see here. But Evander Holyfield kind of leans in and gets caught with a little short right hand. Holyfield almost can't help himself. There, there was is. the punch. He gets on the attack. He has some success, but in having that success, it created the opening and then the end. Well, exactly what I didn't think he was getting up from the first knockdown. This is the second knockdown right here. He just doesn't have his legs underneath him. Well, for the official particulars of Bo Holyfield 3, we send it up to the ring to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace, a round of applause for two warriors in the heavyweight division. Fight number three was everything we wanted it to be. Referee Joe Cortez calls a halt to the bout. At 58 seconds in the eighth round, the winner by TKO victory, and now reigns supreme as the best heavyweight in the world. Okay. Big Daddy. tells Evander Holyfield he loves him and that he wants to thank him. And speaking of thanks, that's what all boxing fans should be saying to these two men as they wrap up an amazing heavyweight trilogy. The first fight was an absolute thriller that Bo won. The second fight was an oddity with the fan man that Holyfield won. And now this one, perhaps the most interesting because it leaves so many questions. Number one, Joe Macy, what is going to be the future of Evander Holyfield? Well, look, Joe, if I was Holyfield or any of his team members, I'd really have to reevaluate what his health condition is, if he's fit to continue to fight, what he has left in the tank, to see if he can advance his career and continue to box. They will have to make those tough decisions as now a 33-year-old who was defeated, third loss of his career. For Joe Macy, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us.